It's Good Morning Phyrexia. In the morning, broadcasting live on location from Scenic. Deserted Temple. Hell yeah. Deserted Temple. The rights were cheap. You know, they, they shoot in like abandoned factories. Yeah, well, no one's there. Exactly. Makes They're not using it. They're just let us film here. Yeah. Uh, hey, guys. Let me do a real quick check to make sure that everything's hooked up. But should be good. Just to make sure. I play the seal of Ori Kalkos. <laughs> Could listen to people play the seal of Ori Kalkos all night. I mean, you say that. I probably will. Yeah. <laughs> Possible. Uh, yeah. So, welcome whoever's here and not being or not stuck watching an ad at the moment. This card is more power than all three This magic card bombs. is about to change the And Wheeler, I'm starting with the Seal of Oracles! This magic card is about to change everything! Activate the Seal of Oracles! The Seal of Oracles! All right. <laughs> uh, so the um, we're gonna play with a viewer, specifically singing gamer ninety four. It's gonna be exciting. Yeah, we're gonna try that a little bit later in the episode. Yeah, uh, I think I wrote on the calendar like three a.m. But you know, he wanted some warning to be awake and ready. Uh, what do the people say? Got that out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. No, we didn't. <laughs> a bit. Well, you know what else we should get out of the way? Wizards up, like, updated. Oh, yeah, okay. They, they, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, new Crimson Vow is gonna, like, officially hit, I mean, it's gonna hit the real game this week, or is that next week? Uh, yeah, end of this week, it's gonna hit. And speaking of next week, Cinemachery, get yourself a copy of Kingsman, The Golden Circle. Yeah. You know, I'll tell you what I don't like about this show, is that it ends what? with, uh... Is that, is that it's always like title colon subtitle okay yeah. which one's one which one's two anyways yeah right there should definitely be a number there yeah that way we could have 302 <laughs> colon 301 <laughs> yeah well if they just you know if it was just kingsman kingsman 2 kingsman 3 but they don't want to do that no because then if like they ever mm -hmm. get to kingsman 8 and they would love to mm -hmm. people are gonna be like ah i didn't see one through seven yeah right well i mean yeah, I saw the Saw movies, 1 through 19. Yeah. Mm. Those just came out, like, every yeah. Halloween for, like, 15 years. Yeah. <laughs> so excited I couldn't sleep, just considering breakfast. Oh, have at it, man. We're going to ramble about nothing. Yep. And Probably. then we'll play, and then we'll go to break and jump you in. Probably some talk about magic, lots of talk about Warframe. Hell yeah. Yo, New War, coming up in December. They didn't give an official date. Very yeah. exciting. Excited about that. I'm excited for resizing decorations. That should be in right now. That's cool. Yeah. I should definitely turn that game on then and have it <laughs> Well, you sound excited. I... Also, that shirt is purple, but it looks blue. Yeah, That's right? Good. Interesting. It's like, it works, looks super blue on screen. Absolutely. Uh, unrelated. Check out what's going on in Crimson Vow. Please. Please and thank you. Hell yeah. Cleave. This example pointed out by, uh, by Dirt Club. But yeah. So, new mechanic, Cleave. You pay the cleave cost, and you remove the bracketed text. That's pretty cool. That one's cool. Uh, there's also going to be training, which is the opposite of mentor. Uh, that's about it. There's going to be a whole lot of blood tokens. Get ready for that. That's coming up later. Uh, blood tokens. New War is like a patch or expansion. And cleave is great. Yo. Uh, yes, cleave is great. And New War is going to be a patch, like a story update. But unlike Destiny, they don't vault content, so you're still going to be able to play all the old stuff. Good. Uh, and another, <laughs> just to get, it makes me wonder if they know where the story's going or if they're just making it up along the way. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, uh, there is no way they know. Oh, yeah. Yeah, right. Like, well, there's a lot of stuff that conflict. Like, it has never been clear if this is actually a sequel to Dark Sector or not, mm -hmm. but, like, the description for Glaive is something like dating back to the time of the first Tenno. Yeah, which... Because in played. Dark Sector, the boy's name was Hayden Tenno. Mm -hmm. But then there's still the storyline where it's like, oh, we called you the Tenno because we were on the Zaraman 10-0 ship. So, they haven't figured out the storyline. <laughs> yeah, they don't They don't know their own lore. It's fine. They're in open beta. 
<laughs> I think uh, they just say that so they can continue to make changes to the game. Yeah, absolutely. Which is fine with me. Yeah, you know? I mean, it's okay. I mean, it's so that you can be like, all right, well, if that's buggy, it's because it's beta. But, mm -hmm. like, the fact, you know, a lot of game developers have complained, and I agree that it's like, you feel pressure to just constantly keep something, like, once you release, it's still got to get updated. People mm -hmm. expect updates. So then hit 1.0, you yeah. know? Right, yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, so check out the new token. There's going to be a treasure token and a copy token. And they look fucking sick. Uh, I want my, I got my eye on those. <laughs> uh, Adam is on the lookout. Hell yeah. They look great. I always love new tokens. But those are all wrong, and I'll talk about why. Uh, so they got some card-specific notes, right? All right, check this. Arm the Cathars. Until end of turn, up to one target or target creature gets plus three, plus three. Up to one other gets plus two, plus two. And up to one other gets plus two, plus one. All of them get vigilance until end of turn. Uh, you can't pick two targets that each get plus three, plus three. You got to pick... It's plus three, plus three, and you can give something plus two, plus two, and you can give a third thing plus one, plus one. Yeah, right. Yeah. So you can hit up to three targets, but, like, you can't target the same thing more than once. Yeah. So those... Yeah, like, the second other means other from the first two. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, blood, veil, blood Vial Purveyor. Uh, whenever an opponent casts a spell, they get a blood token. Whenever he attacks, it gets plus one, plus zero for each blood token defended player controls. They forgot to write the words, until end of turn. <laughs> but he's still good. Like, that, that's still a cool card. It's like... Uh, Magic never used to do that shit until, like, the past two years, you mm. know? Because there was the Samuel Jackson, whatever the hell that card is, the Conductor. <laughs> He's the <clears throat> he's the one that his name is wrong on his on his text. Oh, yeah, the one. That, yeah, she looks a bit like Thunder Conductor. Yeah. Uh, I don't know, but she's from Strixhaven. I bet I can find it. Um, it looks like Samuel Jackson. Yeah, I won't be able to find that. Well, you want to talk about mistakes? All right, read this. Ready? Bride's gown. Equipped creature gets plus two plus zero. It gets an additional plus zero plus two and has first strike as long as an equipment in Grood's finery is attached to a creature you control. Okay, that's fucking wrong, all right? The note they have is that it's like, the U refers to the controller of the equipment. So, it's fucking backward. What it should say is, as long as you control an equipment named Groom's Finery attached to a creature. So, they, they give a horrible note. Anyways, so if I have Bride's Gown and Groom's Finery... Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, so if I control both of them... And they're equipped to a creature. If you steal the creature, but not the equipment, I get my benefits. And so does the other creature, because the equipment is hitting it. Oh, okay. And Groom's Finery is the corresponding for... It's the same as Bride's yeah, Gown, except black. Gets plus zero, plus two, and then plus two, plus zero, if you control the other one, I'm assuming. Uh, I think it's still plus two, plus zero, and plus zero, plus two. It's just... Oh, okay. Yeah. It's just another one. Uh, yeah. So okay. check this out. I love when they print two of the same cards in a set. Yeah, I mean, it makes... It's Crimson Vow. Yeah. You gotta have the bride and groom thing. Right. Uh, check it out. This cemetery illuminator. Uh, whenever it enters the battlefield. Oh my god, exile card. It says... Hang on a second. Uh, I got a note that's much longer and more involved. But we're staring at the stream here. Uh, doo -doo -doo. So long story short, it says cast a spell. And there's going to be a lot of stuff in here about the difference between casting a spell and playing a card. Um... Oh, yeah, that's right. I also have old, old notes. Do, do, do. Okay. Cemetery Illuminator allows you to cast a spell that shares a card type with the exiled card. All right? Mm-hmm. So let me pop that up again and have a look at it. Uh, not that one so much as... Was that the whole note? No, I should have just a card. I don't have just a card. And I was so prepared. Uh, okay. But <laughs> what do the people say? They say, get on with it. Olivgar. Happily ever after, I guess, since they're both vampires and no longer among the living. <laughs> and they both it. unlived happily ever after. Uh, Alright, so Cemetery Illuminator. When it enters the battlefield or attacks, exile a card from a graveyard. I may look at the top card of my library at any time. Once each turn, I may cast a spell from the top of my library if it shares a card type with a card exiled with it. Okay. So let us assume that I play it and then exile an artifact from my graveyard. Mm -hmm. Here's Cosima, God of Voyage. Legendary creature, God. Suppose I see that on the top of my library, having exiled an artifact. Well, I can cast the back of it, which is an artifact. 
Okay. Which is interesting. Because when you cast it, the spell is an artifact. Mm-hmm. Uh, now, let's look at kind of the opposite. Chandra, Dress to Kill. Yeah. Yeah. Plus one, X on the top card of your library. If it's red, it's referring to a card. You may cast it. And then minus seven, X on the top five cards of your library. You may cast red spells. So they like to point out a lot of... Check out Rowan, Scholar of Sparks, is the front. And Will, Scholar of Frost, is the back. Mm-hmm. If I have to exile a card and it's red, that card is red. I don't care about Will, it's red. If I get to play a red spell, I can't play Will. I can play Rowan. Oh, okay. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, they got this Cradle of Safety, which is going to be an interesting note. Uh... Cradle of Safety, Flash, Enchant, Creature you Control. When it enters the battlefield, Enchanted Creature gains Hexproof until end of turn. So, if it comes in, and then you immediately, like, destroy it, the It's Gaining Hexproof is already on the staff for what it's Oh, uh, so yeah, it just keeps the Hexproof until end of turn, even if the enchantment doesn't remain on the battlefield. Yeah. Cool. That's just a reminder that they pointed out. And, let's see, what do we got next? Crawling Infestation. Uh, it's funny that they have to do this every <laughs> set they come out with. I don't They don't have to. I don't know, it's just, <clears throat> for the first 28 years of the game, there weren't, like, <laughs> spelling errors, they didn't, like, leave things out. Now it just seems like they're getting... Yeah, but they were also, they also said, here, it's a blue mana, and you draw three cards at instant speed, it's fine. So they got better at balance. Yeah, I guess, <laughs> sort, sort of. <laughs> I mean, the, the power creep definitely still exists. <laughs> yeah, so on that note... Cultivator Colossus. <laughs> I don't have abundance ready to go, but uh, when it enters the battlefield, you may put a land from your hand out of the battlefield tapped. If you do, draw a card, repeat. And thanks to abundance, instead of drawing a card, you can reveal to hit a land. Uh, so with that combo, you can just put all... Or, yeah, what is it? Uh, let me find abundance. But you can put every lar- every land in your deck onto on the, the battlefield, battlefield uh, tapped. And... Thanks to Abundance, it's like, put the rest on the bottom of your library in any order. Do, do, do. Abundance. Bip. Yeah. That card into your hand, and all other cards revealed this way on the bottom of your library in any order. So you put all of your lands onto the battlefield, tapped, and then the rest of your library in any order. Yeah. Super cool. That's nuts. <laughs> uh, but I feel like if I'm going to tell you that exists... Then I should also tell you, guess what else is in the new set? Its name is Umbris, and it's like Terror Incarnate or something. Fear I Manifest. Do-do-do. I've only ever gotten to like... When it or another Nightmare or Horror enters the battlefield under your control, target opponent exiles cards until they exile a land. Be aware of that, I guess. Yeah, right. Uh, yeah. Enters the battlefield? Oh, yeah. That's awesome. That's it's another... one one for five. Yeah. Well, yeah, but it's a, it's a one one for five, plus one for every card an opponent owns in exile for any reason yeah oh that's pretty cool yeah uh good thing yeah you paying attention kaya good uh, thing we're in the colors to exile cards yeah i mean you said there was like a one blue black to do that once right or no exile down to four lands <clears throat> no it's it's mill mill no oh, fair enough because you know that's what blue black does <laughs> it's mill yeah. it's mill things well to be fair he also works on other nightmares and horrors also pretty cool yeah my quintorius counter no yeah <laughs> Uh, <laughs> let's see. Also, where was I? Will? Yep. Oh, Cradle of Safety. Yep. Is like, once it enters. Yep. Crawling Infestation. Whenever one or more creature cards. I think just because it can't possibly watch itself, it, like, if I destroy all of your creatures and enchantments and this goes, it doesn't get to get the trigger off the other creatures if it dies at the same time. For what it's worth. Um, uh, Cards in Exile. Yeah. He's got a Quintorius deck where he exiles his own graveyard a lot. Oh, cool. Uh, yeah, so they got Demonic Bargain, which is not good. X of the top 13, search library for a card, put the card in your hand, then shuffle. But they say something to the effect of, if you exile the top 13 cards of your library, and there are any remaining, you do have to end up finding a card. Even if you were oh, like, okay. oh boy, I can't wait to look for... Ah, fuck, that's the first one I exiled. Yeah, right. Which seems different. Uh but I think they wrote that note just so they can make a bunch of jokes about, that's not part of the bargain. Uh, Dormammu, I've come to bargain. Yeah. Uh, and then they got 
Iruth, which I kind of hate. Uh, where's the one that it's like? Yeah, the, their note is, you may choose to apply Iruth's uh, replacement effect, even if there are fewer than two cards in your library. If there are no cards in your library, you won't exile any cards this way, but you also won't lose the game for having attempted to draw from an empty library. But the word may is not on there. If you draw a card, X on the top two cards. So I don't know why they have may in the note. Get on with it! We got, oh, we, we ain't even halfway, bro. Pitter patter, God. <laughs> uh, they make a note. Check out Geralt, Visionary Stitcher. Blue tap, sack another non token creature, create a zombie. Uh, they just make a note to say, like, if you copy him, the legend rule is going to move the copy to the graveyard before you get a chance to sack it. Too fast. Yeah. Uh, Halana and Elena partners. I think the, like, obvious joke here is they're lesbians. They're not roommates. They're not partners. Uh, but, anyways, notice partners on the card. Uh, if their power is somehow less than zero, you don't have to remove counters. You don't have to add negative one, negative one counters. It's a bummer. Yeah. <laughs> really wish it let you put minus one, minus one counters on stuff. Yeah. That way you could put them all on your Ozolith when things die. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, Heron of Hope. I hope you're not playing two-headed giant. Because if we're playing two-headed giant and he gains life, I don't get that much plus one, even though it's my life total. Yeah, that's weird. Yeah. It's fucking weird. So that's strange. Uh, Innocent Traveler. Don't worry about the back, but at the beginning of your upkeep, any opponent may sacrifice a creature if no one does transform it. And then it's a slightly larger creature that's got some other benefit. It's not amazing. It's an uncommon. What do you want? So what they the note they make here is go in turn order, right? Mm -hmm. So if there's four of us, I go, do you want to sacrifice a creature? And then you, this guy goes, no. I go, all right. Do you want to sacrifice a creature? This guy goes, yes. I go, all right. Do you want to sacrifice a creature? And if for some reason you still want to say yes, then you can. Mm -hmm. And then all those creatures are sacrificed and it transforms. If no one, if none are. Or right, if no one sacrifices them. Yeah. And then it just becomes a 3 3 with, I'm guessing, menace. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, probably. Uh, I keep trying to move this over to what I should do over here. Let's see what? I have like three devices full of screens. Um, that's a note that doesn't matter. It's a traveler. Back of it is malicious invader, which is unimpressive. Uh, inspired idea is they make a note on continuous effects. That's when timestamp order matters. Those are applied in timestamp order. Uh, yeah, so there's another card that, like, your maximum hand size becomes two. Mm -hmm. So if you play that and then this, now you're at zero. Yeah. But if you play this and then that, it goes to two. Oh, cool. Uh, check this. Overcharged Amalgam. Just a reminder, you can't target mana abilities. They don't use the stack. Uh, but whatever it exploits. Flash. And what it exploits, counter-target spell, activate ability, or triggered ability. That seems cool. Four mana, but... <clears throat> a lot of counter ability. Oh, yeah. And then you wind you up with a creature. You have to sack a guy when you cast it. Yeah. It's interesting. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and because it would counter the ability, obviously, mana abilities don't use the stack. Whereas yeah. Karn just says you can't activate them. Yeah. It's counter target. So it's. Yeah. Uh, check out Parish Blade Trainee. They make a point uh, put counters is not move counters. So if you got the Otolith, and they call that out by name. You put them on target creature and also on the Ultilith. Oh, cool. Which is sweet. Uh, let's see. And a quick note on, I think, some other things. They also had some note. Oh, yeah. Disturb is coming back. Transform is coming back. Uh, just, I think we were wondering. But, yeah, it's as though, like, transforming is just something about it changed. It's not a new one. And that's why they make a note for, like, a Chandra that's like, exile it, return it, transformed. Okay. So, damage marked, stays marked, counters stay, equipment stays, I think, if it could. Mm -hmm. uh, Daybound and Nightbound are coming back. Soulbond is coming back. Uh, <laughs> notably absent... Ooh, more Soulbond? That's awesome. Yeah. I like Soulbond. Yeah, right? Madness, not shown up in regular Crimson Vow, in spite of all manner of, like, discard a card. Mm -hmm. And, like, yeah. blood tokens in require you to discard a card. Mm -hmm. But I did see a card that they mentioned in the uh, Crimson Vow Commander that's going to have it. So that's okay. annoying. Uh, okay. Seems like if I was going to make a Madness deck, it would be Lord Windgrace. I don't know who that is. A uh, new... Uh, uh, no, he was the uh, Planeswalker that you could run as your commander in green, red, black. Okay. His plus two is to discard a card and draw a card. If you discarded a land this way, draw two cards instead. Yeah. And then minus two to put all like up 
put three lands from your graveyard on the battlefield. All right. And then his big minus is like destroy three target permanents, make or six target permanents, make six two two guy. Cool. Yeah. Oops. Just with madness, it would be super awesome because you're like, oh, I'm going to discard this card and draw a card and then cast this thing that I yeah. Know. Madness is like, oh yeah. Was it, it? It's like there was a deck. As far as I know, when Madness first came out, there was only one creature that had, like, discard a card, colon, and it was, like, a mongoose or something. <laughs> and then, who gives a shit? Because now you can discard a card at instant speed and play it. Yeah, right. <laughs> uh, so oh, they have other rules Madness updates. get around time? I mean, it must. Uh, I think when you discard it, yeah. Hmm. Don't be alarmed, but I just saw Phyrexian Obliterator in your window, I think. Okay, we won't be alarmed. Yeah, that's Obi. Yeah. He just... <laughs> Obi, <laughs> right? That's good. That's good. I think so too. Oh, just came up with that on the spot. Yeah, he, uh, I went out there with a fly swatter once, and it did not go well. He's he runs security here at Good Morning Phyrexia. Yeah, <laughs> keeps all those pesky fans away from the windows. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Except the one that's blowing the fog right by it. Yeah, right. <laughs> exactly. So <laughs> he subscribes to OnlyFans and scares them all away. Yeah. Uh, so other rules updates. Here's a fun one. You remember secondary title bars from uh, the one that we said was a good way to do alternate skins? Oh, yeah. They're doing a Van Helsing Dracula thing, and so now secondary cool. title bars are like, that's a Voldaren Bloodcaster, or you get the Dracula Lord of Blood, Blood skin. Way better than all the other secret layer universes unbound uh, yeah. stuff. <clears throat> it definitely looks like they did a better job with that than they did uh, <laughs> Godzilla. Well, it's it's the same way. Oh, is it? Yeah, because, like, the originally secondary title bars referred to, like, Ikoria, mm -hmm. like they did for the Godzilla set. But this is way better than Lucille being a magic card that you search for. Yeah, right. And it's like, what is this bat? Oh, it's the fucking Walking Dead set. Mm -hmm. Lucille. <laughs> oh, my God, I love that because it's my favorite character in Arrested Development. But, oh, right, it's <laughs> from Walking Dead. Yeah. Hey, good work, Obi. Oh, man. That's our third good one. Work, Obi, Obi. third. Obi, three. You're not Obi our only Obi. Obi, three. <laughs> Uh, no, I heard that uh, Ewan McGregor's brother is in the Air Force, and they gave him the call sign OB2. Yeah. <laughs> it's fucking brilliant. Okay, so they made another rule update, which is significant, maybe. Uh, so check out this Jace Cunning Castaway. Don't worry about the rest of it. Minus two. Create a 2-2 two -two blue illusion creature token with uh, some ability. Whatever. Cool. Check it. It's a 2-2 two -two blue illusion. And being that it, the effect said create an illusion token, that means it's a token creature illusion. And it is named after its subtypes, Illusion. Okay? Okay. Uh, the new rule is that now it will inherit the name from its subtypes and also Token. Illusion Token is the new way it works. Uh, so all those blood tokens they got excited about are now, are now called Blood Token. And they printed them all wrong. <laughs> and I'll show you oh. why. Check this out. Alex likes to run Pithing Needle, right? When it comes into play, name a card right and then mm. activate abilities i don't know i think like ruined halo you get protection right i think so something like that yeah so you name a card and you might be saying to me adam tokens aren't cards that's correct but check it illusion is a card so it used to be you would name illusion and you could get a you could get protection from that illusion token because it has the name oh shit right but now it's specifically illusion token right and right. you know why blood <laughs> they had a card called blood and so people were naming blood, and they're like, oh, fuck. They just shut down all the new tokens we made. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. That's actually pretty hilarious. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, you could. It, they said, I think there was, it was something like, we can't expect you to know every card name ever mm -hmm. when it says name a card, and then check, does that overlap with a token name? So the token is named Blood Token. It's easier. That which also sounds like sense we fucked me. up, but also will stop you from fucking up. <laughs> Um, yeah, right. And we then, fucked up, but we can do no wrong? So. No, no, no. Well, I mean, yeah, it's a corporate <laughs> release, so they're not going to say we fucked up. But, right. <laughs> yeah, right. But it's like to prevent anyone else from also doing wrong. Uh, and then also, that's like if it has to get the name generated. If the thing says what the name is, so for this one, it calls it Llanowar Elves, it's still called Llanowar Elves. It's just if you have to, like, generate the name from the subtypes, it ends with token. Okay. Uh, cool, cool, cool. Here's another fun one. I just saw a uh, question on the stack exchange for board games, which includes card games and thus magic. Uh, check out this Mirror Hall Mimic. 
You may have it enter the battlefield as a copy of any creature, except it's also a spirit. And then it's got a disturb cost. You can cast this card from your graveyard transformed when it would be an enchantment aura. Beginning of your upkeep, create a token that's a copy of enchanted creature, except it's a spirit. And if ghastly mimicry would be put into the graveyard from anywhere, exile it instead. Pretty neat. So, here's the question, though. I'm going to play this uh, Mirror Hall Mimic. It's going to be a copy of any creature. And then, let's say I hit your Elite Vanguard, which is a human. And then you play Moon Mist, which you can't see because it's on the bottom waiting for another card to go away. Mm -hmm. Transform all humans. But Mirror Hall Mimic can transform, so it doesn't just ignore that. And then it becomes an enchantment aura attached to nothing and dies. Oh, that's unfortunate. I know, right? That's hilarious. Yeah, Moon Mist is the name of that card? Yep. Jot that shit down. What, Moon? You, you bring stuff all the time. It's an instant. It's I know, I humans. just never knew the fucking name of it. Yeah. It's just Moon Mist, yeah. Right. They, like, that way we can make... As far as I know, it's like the... It must be the only card in Magic that's like transform thing, mm -hmm. as opposed to like self. <clears throat> yeah, right. They keep bringing it up whenever they're talking about transforming. And it, like, it's... Ugh, it's so ridiculous. Yeah. What Azor's Gateway? Mm -hmm. we'll just fucking flip it with that thing. Yep, absolutely. <laughs> Make it an artifact creature, turn it into all creature types, transform yep. all humans, bam. Tap this land for life e for mana equal to my life total. Yeah. Uh, so the wizards, their official rule, that was referenced in the question, uh, that's a lot of text, but yada, yada, yada. When you, trans when you like, make something a copy of something, it's it keeps its copiedness. Mm -hmm. So... Uh, Mirror Hall Mimic. I'm going to enter the battlefield as a copy of any creature and transform it, and it's still a creature. And I forget what we're saying that ends up with. But because it's entered as a copy, you transform it. That the card has transformed doesn't stop it from being a spirit creature. Oh, and So I believe the consensus on some random Stack Overflow question is that it stays alive as a creature. Uh... Physical Mirror Hall Mimic will transform whenever relevant, but the fact that it is a copy and not whatever card you're reading, except also it's a spirit, uh, retains the properties of whatever it copied. Okay. But I think if it then dies, it's now a ghastly, like, the ghastly mimicry is the card that dies. I could be wrong. It's fucking confusing. Uh, I love it. Yeah. Make a werewolf board wipe. I made one for vampire and zombies. Oh, was there not a, like... Destroy all werewolves? Or destroy all vampires? There's one that's like, hit all non-vampires, which makes a lot of sense, right? Yeah, right. Although, you, one... <laughs> one There's also that, uh... Choose one. Destroy all dragons or destroy all non-dragons. Mm. That one's awesome. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. Crux, <laughs> Crux of Fate, I think is what it's called. Makes sense. Uh, I was gonna say, choose one, destroy all creatures that share a creature type with target creature. I don't know, it'd be weird. Uh, oh, yeah, that'd be cool. Or destroy all creatures that do not share a creature type with target creature. Yeah. That and then it hit something cool. with, like, Shapeling, or Changeling, which would be weird, but... And blow out everything. Yeah. Yeah. It, uh, it, like... Be a board wipe if you really all want. All you have to do is make it cost four mana, and it's balanced. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> it's not that hard. <laughs> yeah. Four mana, Wrath of God, that's your standard. Yeah, pretty much. Destroy all creatures for four mana. You want to do something different than that? As long as it's four or more, you're fine. Yeah, exactly. Well, you want to do something better? Well, here's the question. Is it worth a mana to have a choice? Maybe not. Maybe maybe the first mana, sure, but like the eighth mana, not so much. I mean, I, I really like Austere Command. Mm -hmm. Six mana with the four choices. Yeah. Uh, which is really good. And then there's that Cleansing Nova, I think is what it's called. You get to choose one. Either destroy all creatures or destroy all artifacts and enchantments. Hmm also really good hmm uh Kratar's Wrath I think is like three and two white Wrath of God but with a flashback cool could be wrong on that yeah which is great who knew God had one thing but like this one bird warrior has a better one it should be like claw marks in the night as long as one of your werewolf fights another and as long as it's night yeah you know oh, oh yeah you know what I think is dumb we were talking about um we like to make fun of Voril the whole clan he's a human merfolk mm hmm but you know what, like, as far as redundant creature types, we have both Nightmare and Horror, which is dumb. Yeah, those we seem have, like they could be the same thing. Yeah, and with all this, like, Midnight Hunt, we've seen a lot of instances of, like, wolf and werewolf. Just make it wolf. Yeah. Just, if you gotta be a werewolf, you're a human wolf. Right, that that makes sense to me, <laughs> for sure. 
You are a human and a wolf. Therefore, you are a werewolf. Yeah. But no, this is a werewolf creature. It's a werewolf yeah. wolf. Yeah, and a lot of the werewolves say human werewolf. Half human, half human, half wolf. Okay, yeah, right. Because, like, werewolf literally is, like, Old Norse. Where is human. There was, like, man. man. Half bear pig. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Man, where is my South Park extended universe magic set? Yeah. My God, give me a man bear pig card. Yeah, that's all I'll you play need. the living shit out of that. I'll play Randy <laughs> Marks. Get on with it! Wow, twice? Yeah, let's get on with it. Though. Yeah, I, no, that sounds like a good idea. Okay. I'll, con I'll continue this conversation as we get over the table. That's fine. Hell yeah. Let me find the button to indeed get on with it. Uh, hell yeah.